that we haven't talked about the histological aspect and then we have to talk about the inside of your kidney okay so let's say if i do a the cross sections of the kidney let's say if i cut it in the half okay if i cut in the half and if you come back here okay you're going to see some of the structures right here so if i made up i made a cross sections of this right and then if you see so this one is going to be my okay this is going to be my okay my which is a ureter ureter okay that's why this is a ureter 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 pelvic junction right now then this is going to be my renal pelvis right here okay okay and this guy's right here is going to be my major calyx right here okay and this is going to be my minor calyx and and this is going to be my renal papillae okay now these are structures and i already talked about the blood vessels too but i'm going to talk about that too but guys whenever we talk about we have to talk about a couple of things the most important things that we ever we're going to talk about is that i already talked about the outside layer right but this area you see guys right here this area is called co there are two these are called cortex and this side right here like this side this is going to be my medulla okay so these are my these are my medulla okay and then this is going to be my cortex okay and this cortex is the one that contains nephrons and nephrons are the functional unit of your kidney and each kidney has about in each human kidney has about like 1 to 1.2 million kidneys okay and then so all together combined if you have two kidneys then you all together you should have like 2 to 2.5 nef million nephrons in your body okay and one more thing is that during the birth the amount of nephrons the amount of nephrons that are present in your both the kidneys whatever that number is 1.2 millions with both kidneys if it's 2.2 million that is gonna be for the rest of your life your numbers of nephrons does not increase as you age instead number of nephrons could decrease as you age and with the pathological conditions nephrons could decrease even more further but nephrons does not increases okay that's something i want to mention about that and this area is called so in the cortex okay we have a and then we have to talk about two different types of nephrons we have okay and what are those two different types of nephrons okay so you have a uh, types of nephrons okay one is called okay you can simply say superficial nephrons okay i'll say, I just write it as superficial nephrons and then or you can say cortical nephrons okay and other one is called juxta medullary nephrons okay and what is the concept of this okay so the difference between this uh cortical nephrons and juxta medullary nephrons okay one of the difference of cortical nephrons is that normally what happens is that if you are over hydrating doing a large amount of wire or you have a normal amount of urine output then usually it's the cortical nephron responsibility to to form urine okay that's what it does but sometimes if you're dehydrated okay or you have less water in your systems okay then kidney has a function kidney can play a role and then kidney can actually pass less urine okay so your urine will get concentrated okay and that is usually done by your juxta medullary nephrons okay so based on your body demands based on the amount of water that amount of water that is present in your body ions or water electrolytes okay and we'll talk about the function of the kidney too and you'll know you'll know more about more about it too so what happened based on the body demands the kidney can regulate how much water can kidney can excrete out or how much kidney should how much water should kidney should repay or retain okay to maintain the osmoregulations okay to maintain the water and ion balance all right that's what one thing that can do then one of the difference between the cortical nephrons or juxta medullary nephrons or these are also called superficial nephrons is that juxta medullary nephrons produces concentrated urine okay it may it makes a hypertonic urine all right hypertonic and then cortical nephrons is usually normal is 84 most of the 85 90 percent of it's the cortical nephrons are the one that are producing urine okay and we'll talk about other things too and hold that concept and all as we go we'll talk more about that, that kind of about that kind of stuff okay this cortex okay 
this cortex has nephrons okay like right here you can have nephrons here you can have nephrons here, here. and nephrons usually looks like this if you come back to the structure right here okay nephrons has all this okay this one is going to be my efferent arterioles this is going to be my glomerular capillaries this is going to be my efferent arterioles okay and then if you look at this one right here this is going to be my bowman capsules okay the c-shaped collar bowman capsule and this one is going to be okay let me just write it down this okay this is going to be my pct okay and then we'll make this is okay this is my descending limb okay this is going to be my loop of hanley this is going to be my thin ascending limb and this is going to be thick ascending limb and then this is going to be my let's say distal convoluted tibial and this is going to be my collecting tibial and this is going to be the ear knob right so look this is going to be my bowman's capsules okay this is going to be my efferent arterioles this is going to be my glomerular capillaries and this is going to be my efferent arterioles okay and later that will become a peritubal capillary still we'll talk about that too but these are usually these are the nephron okay nephron is this okay and we have as i said we have millions of nephrons in our body correct and then we say we have a cortical nephrons and we have a juxtamedullary nephrons and what does that mean which well, basically means as a guys like if you look at this one right here okay if you look at this like you see if you look at right here this is on the cortex right all this area okay let's make it here if you make it right here okay all the way down right here okay this is my cortex right and then from the cortex what is happening here this is going to be my my nephrons right here okay yeah right here right here right here right here right here right here right here, right here, right here. okay so we'll make this is so here you can see another nephrons if i make a small nephrons right here okay we could make something like this okay like that so this is like one nephrons i'm just making small nephrons okay sorry it's coming on but just know what you're talking about so these are nephrons right so you could have in each of the cortex okay so these are cortical nephrons but if the if the nephrons are right here like let's just say if the nephrons are right here okay and then we'll just say like that so basically these are glomerular capillaries and if the it's if it's near the medulla okay near these pyramids okay then we call them as the juxtamedullary nephrons okay if it's near because it's juxta is near near the medulla that's what we call the juxtamedullary nephrons okay so these are near medulla and one of the okay, let me write it down so and one of the difference of juxtamedullary nephrons is that as i said they make a concentrated urine and this one is normally functioning cortical nephrons is. and other one is that this juxta medullary nephrons you have to remember this it has long loop of henley okay compared to the cortical nephrons cortical nephrons has a shorter loop of henley okay so juxta medullary nephrons has a long loop of henley okay because it has to go juxta and it has to loop around because it has to go to medulla okay and it has a loop around that's why it has a longer loop of henley versus the cortical nephrons cortical nephrons has shorter loop of henley okay and one more other structure is that okay i'm going to write it down here usually what happens with the cortical nephrons is let me just write down right here with the cortical nephrons what happens is let's just make this fn arterioles right fn arterioles splits out and becomes your glomerular capillaries right and from the glomerular capillaries what happens it becomes your fn arterioles right and from the fn arterioles what happens splits out and become your peritubular capillaries right so let, let's make this fn arterioles right here fn arterioles which becomes your glomerular capillaries and it becomes your fn arterioles and it splits out and become peritubular capillaries and the peritubular will become your venules okay And it will become your venules okay and i'll go back to the veins okay this is for the this is true for the cortical nephrons okay but what is the unique of this guy which is my what is this guy which is my juxtamedular nephrons is that it will have fn arterioles it will also have a glomerular capillaries it will also spread fn arterioles but guess what instead of sp splitting breaking down and becoming your peritubal capillaries you know what it becomes it gives it does not it does not become peritubular capillaries only cortical nephrons have that juxtamedular nephrons what happens it will become this long something called vasa recta these are capillaries but vasa means long okay but it becomes a vasa recta okay vasa recta and because vasa recta have this have have this phenomena called counter current exchanger and we'll talk about later when we start when you study when you study 
all those components of your tubular structures, these veins or racta are very, very important for maintaining hypertonicity, okay? Okay? So it will become the vasa rakta, okay? That's what it will become. And then from the vasa rakta, what happens? It will go and become your arcuate veins and the arcuate veins and it will bring the all this back into the blood, okay? So that's all the difference, okay? So I told you three differences, okay? Between, between the cortical nephron and juxtameral nephrons. W one difference is the concentrated urine that is made by juxtameral nephrons, okay? And, and then normally, in a normal condition, there's a moderate amount of water urine you're overhydrated or normal, usually it's a cortical nephron that's making the urine, okay? We talked about this having a long loop of Henle with the juxtameral nephrons and shorter loop of Henle with the cortical nephrons. And all that we also talked about is that with this structure right here, with the juxtameral nephrons, it does not become your, from if you're not here, it does not become your peritubular capillaries. Instead, it becomes your vasa rakta. But with the cortical nephrons, it will become your what if and sorry peritubular capillaries right now it will become now it will just now now if we talk about the blood vessels here like let's say this is a blood vessel right coming down here okay my renal artery gives up like five branches like this up here the sigma segmental arteries right all that kind of and go all that kind of stuff. so if i make this one branches let's just make one branch that's coming down here okay it will go and then this becomes my what let's make this as my interlover artery okay this is my interlover artery and it will arc with like this okay it will arc with like this and we can make another primary so it will arc with like this and these are called arc with artery and this arc with artery is right here okay this arc with artery is going to do it it's going to give a lot of rises and we'll make one of them but there's going to be a lot of them and this is going to be my afferent arterioles from the arc with artery and it will become a glomerular capillaries like this okay and then from there if an arterial will become Okay, if an arterial, and then after that, it will become peritubular capillaries. We will make this as a peritubular capillary. Peri means like circles or surrounding the peritubular capillary. And from the peritubular capillary, it will become your veins. Okay, that's usually happening. So, this is a fine arterials, and this all happens in the cortex. Okay, so usually nephrons, what about the nephrons? Are, these are nephrons are supplied by you have this if an arterial is going, and then you have a Glomerular capillaries, if any notorious, okay, and the peritubular capillary, that's what it's happening here right now, okay, and then it becomes venous veins, and then later it, drain, it, it drains into inferior vena cava, okay. This is the true for the cortical nephrons, okay. Now, so after the blood vessel, we talked about very detail about this. Now we'll have to talk about this, this, this cortex, okay. What is the true of the cortex? You know, like in the cortex, if we talk about this cortex, okay, we'll just use this as right now. What is the truth of the cortex is that, you know, right here, obviously there are nephrons, right? But if you look at the, you know, histological picture, okay, we call these portions, okay, this portion is called cortical, okay, we'll just write it down. We call that portion is called cortical, cortical, labyrinth okay this cortical lab labyrinth okay these are cortical these are in the these are in histological we call them cortical lab labyrinth and this cortical labyrinth right here in the cortex it contains okay malpighian corpuscles what are malpighian corpuscles are called you can call mal begin corpuscles okay or simply you can call renal corpuscle okay it also has it's in the cortex, okay? These are present in cortex. And it has a PCT, which is a proximal convertibules, and it has a DCT, which is a distal convertibules. And then right here on the, these are my medullas, okay? And usually there are eight to 12 pyramids, okay? And these are pyramids, okay? It looks like a pizza type of silver color. Different, different book might say different things. There could be 12 to 18, but it's not that. Okay, varies from book to book, okay? And these are pyramids. And they have this, something called like down here, like this lines. Okay, this striated, and these are called medullary rays, okay? And those medullary rays contains, okay? Those medullary rays contains all those, like, those long, like, loop of Henle, okay? The ascending limb, okay? Loop, ascending limb, descending loop, loop of Henle, and then also the collecting tubules, okay? All this contains in the, so on the, on here, okay? These are medullary rays. That's what it is called, okay? Now, 
After that, after that, when we talk about it, and hold the structure from like down here to this part, okay, with the cortex and the one pyramid, we call them the renal, renal lobe, okay? The renal lobe, they call that as. And then, if you look at this, if you look at this, you see the space between these two, right here? Some of the the cortex are, can actually can extend out from there here. And this space is called renal column of Bertini. That's what they call as a, okay? They call renal columns. And as I said, this area right here, or these are pyramids, okay? And these are called renal papillae. Okay, this is where the urine kind of like a, drains out from it, okay? And then we talked about this is called cortical labyrinth. They have a nephrons and there's renal corpuscles, or we can also call the Malpighian corpuscles, okay? And the renal corpuscles contains, usually what is the renal corpuscle contains? The renal corpuscles usually contains two things, okay? You have one thing, it's called glomerulus, Another one is called, what is it, Bowman capsules, the C-shaped collar, okay? So usually Malpighian corpuscles or renal corpuscles contain, whenever we talk about renal corpuscles, we have to talk about, what they meant by, they're, they're talking about glomerules and they're also talking about Bowman capsules, okay? If they talk about cortical labyrinth, then we're talking about the glomerules, Bowman capsules, PCT and DCT we're talking about, and this is an histologically, okay? Now, that's what is happening. And after that, it will drain into minor calyx and major calyx and then renal pelvis and it will go to the ureter, okay? Now, these are usually the, uh, the structures of the kidneys.